Hello friends, and welcome to today's video where I want to talk about pre-rendering backgrounds. Over the past few weeks I've been drawing the backgrounds for the next few shots in my Futurama project. And yesterday I showed how I finished them off and split up the next scene into three smaller ones. And today I want to add these backgrounds into these three new animation scenes, ready for drawing and adding the characters into. But already, after thinking about it a little and seeing the number of columns I created for these few backgrounds, I've changed my mind about how I'm going to do this. I've considered a much more efficient way to include them, which was exactly the point of this project for me to learn what works and what preconceptions I had that needed changing, and this was one of them. So I was going to load in the background scene as a sub -X sheet, and then expose the appropriate background for the time needed. And although I'm not doing that for this project, let me show you how that would work and why I'm not doing it, because it could be useful for other projects or for simpler backgrounds. So I created this separate project here to hold all the backgrounds, and I'll have another one for the characters, and then a third where I'll bring them all together. So you can see how many columns I've added, and this is because the background is made up of different visual layers. And I've started to add two columns per layer. So for instance, here for the main background, this is a two raster level, and I've added a vector level behind it to get the benefit of a vector gradient level, as you can see. And there's also extra columns added when I added the lighting effect, these four here. But these aren't needed for every background. These first three columns, for instance, are only needed for the kitchen lights, which aren't visible from all angles, including for this scene. And then this light spot is only visible for this background. So there's lots of visual clutter on the X sheet, but also in the schematic views. But it also takes a long time to render, so including it all in the final animation would slow it down. If we go to the first frame and turn on preview mode, it takes a second to appear, it's not too bad, and that's because there's no lighting effects here. But if I press play to step through each of the backgrounds, you see how long it takes exactly to load them all in. And the first couple are quite quick, then the few in the kitchen are quite slow because there's three lighting effects in the kitchen area, as well as the glow effect for the hologram generator on the table. Then the final background has a large light effect at the top. So it's a fairly slow process, and I wanted to make this quicker. So let me just load the animation scene, and I'll show you how I would have added these using the sub X sheet method. So first let's move the animatic out of the way. So to add the background, you go to the file menu, choose load as sub X sheet. Go to the backgrounds, scenes, and choose the background scene for the conference room. We choose to load it rather than import so we don't get a local copy in this project. And that'll just reference it here. You can see that's loaded all frames of the background. And then what I do is I find the appropriate background frame, which is frame number three, and add extended exposure to show it for the time needed. So I include the animation of the door opening, and then I'll extend this for as long as necessary. And then when the background changes, I'll set to new drawing from this select sheet by using the Q and W keys, and then continue that through to the rest of the scene. So I'll do this for each angle, selecting a frame, adding any zoom or camera movements, and then the next step will be to draw, animate, and add the characters in between the background. And if you're thinking about collapsing columns to a sort of egg sheet, well that's almost what I'm thinking. That would certainly restrict the number of columns shown, which would be a huge help. But I wanted three things from doing this. First, I wanted to have fewer columns in this animation scene, and the sub-egg sheet would help with this. Second, I wanted to be able to use effects in the background, but not have them take up space visually in columns on the egg sheet or in the effect schematic. And again, the Clap sub -X sheet also does this. I'd also like to not extend the preview or rendering time, because the longer the rendering takes, the less likely I'd be to add more effects. So if they take up no time, that would be ideal. 
And finally, I'd like to be able to easily update the background and have it work in the animation scene when I load it or when I run my render tasks without too much effort. I don't have to come to the animation scene and re-import sub -X sheets or re-add levels to this scene every time I add a new effect or a drawing level to a background for instance. So the solution I've chosen is a very simple one, to render out the backgrounds from the background scene as images, and then in here just reference those images in the animation scenes. And then if I change the background, I just need to re-render them out, and the latest copy will be picked up in the animation scene. So to do that, first I need to make a few changes in the background scene. So here I am in the background scene again. We want to set this up ready to render out the images. And if you remember, when I first created the levels, I created them at double the size of standard HD resolution. And this was to allow me to put in enough detail so I could zoom into some of the background if necessary and not lose any quality. But to be able to fit them in onto a standard resolution, I added a scaling of 50%. So you can see here in the background scene, I've got a key with a global scale of 50%. So the first thing I want to do is to delete that key. So now the background is at 100%. And if you remember in the schematic, all the other levels are hanging off the background, so they'll also scale back to 100%. But now you can see the camera is still set to a standard HD output, so we need to change that. So we do that in the X sheet, camera settings. And you can see it's standard HD here, so we just change that to 4K and immediately you see the red camera outline stretch to the full size of the screen. So we'll close that. So now when we render the output, they'll be rendered to 4K images. And finally, to make it easier to render, I'm going to collapse some of the columns together into sub X sheets so we've only got four representing each level. So for instance, the background behind all the characters is made up of the gradient level, the background to raster level, the three kitchen lights and the main light, and then the door animation. So we'll highlight all the columns here, just right click and choose Collapse. And we'll apply that to include peg bars, which there aren't any. Okay, so now this one level is the entire background. Next we want the chairs that go behind the table, and even though this is one column currently, we may well add other columns afterwards to add effects or to add a gradient to the chairs. So again, for consistency, I'll collapse that down. Then we've got the table that's made up again of two levels. So we've got the actual drawing of the table, and that includes the hologram and the computer display for the professor, as well as the gradient level for the tabletop and the table edge. And also the table light, which is the effect of the hologram in the centre. So we'll highlight over all three columns, right click and choose collapse. And again, for the chairs at the front, we could collapse that to a sub -back sheet or could leave it as a single column. But for consistency, if we choose to later, let's collapse that down into a sub -back sheet so we can add more columns inside there. And the final thing I'll do is I'll double click and rename all the column headers. Okay, so here we are back in the background scene. And what we want to do is to export this out as images but we don't want to have a single image for each frame, we want to have a single image for each frame for each column. And that'll enable us to have an image for the background and a separate image for the table in front of the background, which allows us to put the characters in between the two. And there's a couple of ways of doing this. The first one is to show only one sub X sheet and then render that out, and then show the next sub X sheet, render that out, and the same for the final two. But the shortcut I'd like to show today could save you a lot of time. So let's take a look at it. So if you go to the output settings, the first thing we want to change is the output doesn't want to be a video file, it wants to be an image sequence, so select an image type like PNG. And because the project is for all backgrounds, and I'll have a separate scene for each room, I don't want all of the images going to the same folder, otherwise it'll be difficult to find the images we need. So I want to create a subfolder inside the outputs. So I'll just call this one conference room. And using this simpler method, OpenTunes will actually name the file itself, but let's have a prefix of CR for conference room. 
so ordinarily OpenZoom would output every column into the same image. But if you don't want that, as we don't today, go into the Other Settings section at the bottom of the Output Settings, and in Multiple Rendering, change it from None to either FX Schematic Flow or FX Schematic Terminal Nodes. And if we take a look at the FX Schematic, you'll see that the four columns don't have any effects applied to them, so there's four separate outputs going into the X sheet. And it's these outputs that will be rendered individually, which is exactly what we want. So if we go to the output settings and leave it on one of these two alternate settings. The final thing to notice is the output is set to 4K resolution as we set on the camera settings earlier. And if you do change the camera settings, sometimes the values aren't shown in here, but the next time you restart OpenTunes, they will be shown. So if I just hit render, And if we take a look in the Explorer view, you'll see a subfolder in Outputs called Conference Room, like we asked for. And then when we look in there, we can see all of the images labelled with our image name at the start, CR, then underscore, then the name of the column, which is why it's important to name the columns. And then also the column number is written afterwards, followed by the number of the frame. So we've got the background, the seats at the back, seats at the front and the table. Now once you first output these and then use them in a project, do be careful of renaming the columns or changing the order because these names will change and in your new project it won't pick up the files. Okay, so here we are in the animation project and we need to add the backgrounds in ready for setting up the animation. But because in this project I've already set up the animatic, the first thing I need to do is move that out of the way of the camera. And we can do that using the animate tool and just drag it above there. So to import the backgrounds, we just start on a new column. So here's the output for the four columns from the conference room backgrounds. And because the images were rendered out of OpenTunes, they've been rendered in the OpenTunes image sequence format which means you can load them all back in as a single image sequence, as though they were one level. And there's two ways to do that. The first way, if you've got an explorer handy showing the folder, you can select on one of the images and drag it in to open tunes. And it'll ask if you want to import or load the image. And if you choose import, it'll copy these images into this scene, which means you'll have a local copy just for this scene. So if you change them in the main project, they won't update in this scene. But we want them to be updated, so I can go back later, change the background, re-render them, and they'll work correctly in this scene. So what we need to do is choose load, and that will load them from this location and continue to load them from this location the next time we start this scene. So it'll pick up any changes that you've re-rendered. So let's hit load. And you'll notice it loads all 11 images let's take a look at the other way to load the images and that's from the X sheet to right click on a frame and choose load level and then you can just browse to the output folder and choose the level that you want to load and because they're named as an image sequence it doesn't show every single file it just shows the name of each separate image sequence which makes it easier to choose so here we choose seats at the back and say load and again, you get the option to import or load, and we want to choose to load them. And it loads all 11 images. And if I load the other two, and I can select both columns and load those in. And it loads them both at once. So let's just reorder them so the table sits in the middle, and let's rename the columns. And if we take a look through, we can see that all four columns are still in sync and showing the correct images. And because they've been rendered as images, there's no effects to add, so the rendering time will be improved, but you've got the output of the effects, so you can still see the glow around the light here, and the glow around the hologram machine. So you can see we've got all the benefits of using the OpenTunes effects, but without the rendering time. And the other thing you notice is that because they're 4K images, they're larger than the actual camera view. So we'll need to zoom in to the appropriate level as we set up this background. So now it's just a case of setting up the background by choosing the appropriate drawing from each layer. 
Right, so to use these backgrounds, we'll take a look at the animatic at the top, and this shows the view that we need to find. And there it is, drawing number three. So all you need to do is to delete the drawings you don't want, and then extend it for the time it needs to be shown. So here you can see is where the door opens. So extend drawing number three down to here. The door then opens until it's fully opened, which is drawing number nine. So I'll delete the rest. And then we'll extend drawing number nine until frame 43 when we need to show the close up. So to do that with four columns, we can simply highlight all four columns. And then because we're all part of the same level, we can press the Q or W key to cycle through the different drawings. There, that's the close-up drawing that we need. And then we can extend this for as long as is necessary. Okay, so I've set up the appropriate backgrounds. Now I just need to set the view for the camera. So we go to the camera column and using the animate tool, we just set the scale and the position. So we know the camera needs to be twice as big to fit the whole image in. So we'll set the scale here to 200%. And then when the door opens, we'll set a slight zoom by pressing the key button on the first frame and then a zoom in and a reposition on the last frame. So you just continue like that with each scene adding the backgrounds and adding any camera moves. And then to add the characters, you just insert a column to where you want the characters to be. And of course, if you've got lots of characters, to keep the view simple on the X sheet, you could always collapse those into a sub X sheet, so that on the main timeline, you see a single column for the characters. So there we go. That's the first part of this scene done. And I've since gone ahead and added the backgrounds to the next two scenes with some basic camera updates and a little blur to see how it looks. And you can see that playing in the background. But I'm sure I'll change some of this as I add the characters and animation. So there's how I'm using pre-rendering of my backgrounds to get the benefit of using multiple level types and the effects in OpenToons and to speed up production time in the actual animation. So join me next week when I'll continue with this project and start drawing the characters. And that's when things start getting interesting. And that's a guarantee. Mm -hmm.